take a look at this azalea. It, these branches are buried in mulch and you can't even see the main trunk of the plant. If you take and scrape all this off, look at easily I'm getting four to six inches of old mulch off of the plant. Now the branches are up in the air and you can see the main stem right there. Yeah. So we need to strip some mulch off of this bed. And also look over here, your window well. The mulch is already up to the top. If you put any more mulch on top of that, if it rains, the water's gonna come down and go where? Into my window and into my basement. We don't want that to happen. No, we don't. So we're gonna strip the mulch out of this bed. But before that, we're gonna come out, we're gonna cut a nice fresh edge right along the bed. Okay. Let's get to work. This is the tool we're gonna use to cut the edge with. It's called an edger. It has a half moon steel shape to it. It's got a little pad for your feet so you can really stomp on it. And this one has a steel handle that won't break. So what we're going to do is we're going to line it up, jump on it, and pick up the piece of soil. And you can see there's a little bit of grass in there. What happens is people will flick this up into the bed, and this grass will just grow and become a problem. And they've also added soil to the bed, so they have to put more mulch on top of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to clear that all out along with the excess mulch. So why don't you start down that end edging, and we'll meet in the middle. Excellent. You always watch your line. Now you're trying to make a nice clean edge on this, but you're trying to make a nice smooth one too. Yeah, see how we have a nice curve coming down here and it lines up really nice? Yeah. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's get all this edging and all the excess mulch out of this bed. Excellent. Roger, how do you know that you've gone deep enough? Well, when you start seeing the topsoil, which is this brown area here, and you start picking up all these little roots, that means you've gone deep enough. Yeah, take and scoop all that stuff out of the edge. Just don't disturb that nice cut we made there, okay? I want to see that when you're done. Okay. What I want to do is get all the heavy stuff off the bed using the rake. Then I'm going to get down with my claw and just clean out around the plants themselves. All right, Roger. This wheelbarrow looks full. What should I do with all of this now? Take it around back, put it in your compost pile, and then it'll break down and turn into compost. All right. Excellent. Roger, do you want to dig down a little bit to make it so that the water stays in there for the shrubs? No, you don't want to create a ring. These roots have actually come out into the soil all the way, and that's where you want the water. And that's what will happen with an inch or two of mulch. It'll let the water go down and the roots will be fine. Okay. Makes sense. Wow, Roger, what a difference. I guess I did have a lot of mulch here. This bed is all ready to put new mulch in. But before we do that, I want to take a look at this cherry over here. If you look at it, it has what we call a mulch volcano around it. When mulch gets piled up around the trunk of a tree every season, it starts to resemble a volcano. The mulch will actually smother the primary root system, and a secondary root system will grow into the mulch. These roots can girdle the trunk and ultimately strangle the tree. We've got to remove this mulch to make your tree healthy again. We're going to take these cultivators and dig very carefully around the trunk of the tree, removing the excess mulch. Okay. So, Roger, do you think we're going to have to replant these hostas? No, I think they'll be fine once we remulch this bed. What I want to do is get all the stuff out of here so we can take a look at the roots. Okay. All right, look right here. This is the root flare right there, and here's a primary root coming off it. Everything above that is a secondary root growth, and we're going to cut it out. Now, when I work in the dirt like this, I don't use a brand new pair of hand pruners because I'll ruin them. I'll cut that one out, and then I'll take and cut that one out. All right, I might as well get rid of this one. Now, this is a real culprit. You can see it's actually already wrapping around the trunk. I'm going to cut it here. And then we're going to do a little more excavation and see if we can find any more. There we go. Excellent. Now I don't have to worry about these growing back, or will they? Well, you know, we're going to put a lot less mulch in here, so the chances are they won't have a place to grow. But we'll keep an eye on it, maybe check it in five or ten years. Okay. All right, let's get this stuff cleaned out. Well, one thing you did right, you dumped the mulch on the driveway. So many times homeowners will dump it on their lawn, and then by the time they move the mulch, the lawn's dead underneath. So right. congratulations. Thank you. Here's another thing homeowners do wrong. They try to use a pointed shovel like this to do mulch. Now, that's hard to dig in, and you don't get a lot of mulch with it. 
look what you get. So this is my tool for mulch. This is called an ensilage fork. It has 10 tines and they're pointed. It's used by farmers to move manure around. I use it to move mulch around because I can take this and in about four scoops, I can fill the wheelbarrow. So if you bring that over there, we'll get started mulching. Great. Now, another thing that happens, people try to dump the mulch into the bed and two things can happen. Number one, you can crush this nice edge that we made. Number two, you dump too much mulch in and you end up piling it up again. Right. So what I like to do is actually take it out of the wheelbarrow, set it in place, and then spread it out using little piles instead of big piles. You get that rake, you can start raking out these piles. And remember, I only want it an inch or two thick, no thicker than that. Okay. Roger, how close do I want to go to these shrubs? Now, around the plants, you don't have to push it all the way up under the plants. You want to just take and bring it to the drip line. You can do this by hand or you can do it with a rake, but that way there, we're not getting mulch up against the branches or the trunk of anything. Now, Greg, along the edge, we don't want to build the mulch up. If it's built up like this, you can't keep it trimmed and the grass will grow in there. Yeah. If you keep it down like we have there, it's airspace, the grass can't grow in, and then you can just take your string trimmer and go right along the edge and keep that nice and neat. So take that little bit of mulch out of there. Okay. Now remember this plant, these branches were absolutely buried in mulch. Now you can see the main trunk here and the branches are all lifted up out of the mulch. Will that make that plant flower more? Absolutely, going forward it will flower more. It's a much happier plant. All right, let's finish up with this tree. You want to give me a scoop in here? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take and just spread it really thin, but we're not going to get any up against the trunk of the tree. We want to let that breathe. We're just going to put an inch coating out here where the roots are. Try and help you spread it a little bit here. Thank you. I appreciate that. Looking good. Much better than before. I love this brown mulch too. This is my favorite. Pastas are tough. This should be fine. Okay. You got one more for me on the other side? Sure. Well, I think we're good. Yeah, Roger, it was a lot more work than I thought it was going to be, but I know the plants are healthier and it looks a lot more cleaner for sure. It looks great.